We will now call to order the special call meeting for the Redevelopment Authority for July 27, 2020. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. Before we proceed to item number one, I will remind those in the audience as well as those on the DS if they will please silence their phones and if they're on vibrate, please set them to silent as well. Item number one. Consider approval of minutes, special call Muskogee Redevelopment Authority, June 15, 2020, and special call Muskogee Redevelopment Authority, June 22, 2020, or take other necessary action. We've all had an opportunity to preview the minutes. Do we have any corrections or a motion to approve? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number two. Consider approval of a cooperative agreement between the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority and Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame and Museum for the implementation of cultural and tourism development of the greater Muskogee community or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. Uh, Mayor, uh, members of the authority, this is the annual agreement between the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority and the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame. The amount of the agreement is for $55,000. It is a one-year term uh, commencing on July 1st and running through June 30th, 2021. There's been no changes from last year's agreement. You should have in front of you a copy of their report of their accomplishments over the past year. And Amy Love is present to kind of summarize that report and answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Garvin. Do we have any questions from the council? Or a motion to approve? So moved. Second. second. They're properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, thank you to the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame for all you continue to do. Item number three. Consider approval of a cooperative agreement between the Muskogee Redevelopment Authority and Three Rivers <coughs> Museum for the implementation of cultural and tourism development of the greater Muskogee, Muskogee community or take other necessary actions. Mr. Garvin. This is the annual agreement with Three Rivers Museum. The amount of the agreement is 53000 It is a one-year term, also beginning July 1st, running through June 30th, 2021. Uh, this is an increase of 3000 this year. The additional money was to cover the cost, I believe, for mowing uh, during the summer. Uh, staff recommends approval, and Angie Rush is present if you have any questions. Mr. Garvin, it's been some time since they received any increase. Is that correct? That is correct. Do we have any other questions from council or a motion to approve? Moved for approval. Second. second. It's been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. And thank you, Three Rivers, for what you do to your contribution to the city as well. This time, uh, that will conclude that meeting. We will now call to order the uh, meeting of the Muskogee City Council for July 27, 2020. Please join us for the invocation led by Council Member Ivory Van, followed by the flag salute. May by head, please. Our Heavenly, most gracious Heavenly Father, this evening, dear Lord, just help us and guide us, O Heavenly Father. I'm asking that you touch me tonight, O Heavenly Father, to say the right things that I should say, O dear Lord. And bless our counsel, O Heavenly Father. Help us to love each other and just wrap our arms around each other, O Heavenly God. And bless our city, Heavenly Father. Please, Lord, help us with this coronavirus that's spreading, dear Lord. Only you can control it, O Heavenly Father. And also, dear Lord, Bless Councilman, I mean not Councilman, but Congress, Congressman Lewis family as they grieve and put him away this week. And uh, like I say, Lord, he was a great man in Washington, D.C. He, he walked across the bridge for our freedoms and our rights, oh, Heavenly Father. We deserve a lot from him because, like I said, if it hadn't been for him and others, we wouldn't be up here talking tonight. And oh, Heavenly Father, just wrap your arms of protection around us and our families, oh, Heavenly Father. Bless each and everybody's family here in Muskogee and they're all around the world and the families up here on the council. And we ask all these blessings in your name, for your sake, amen. Amen. Please join us for the flag salute. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible,
indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Marlene Coleman. Here. Deputy Mayor Jared Reed. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Jamie Stout. Here. Evelyn Hibbs. Here. Alex Reynolds. Here. Stephanie Morgan. Here. Tracy McGee. Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. We will now consider the approval of the minutes for the special call city council meeting for July 6, 2020 and city council regular session for July 13th, 2020. Do we have any corrections or motion to proceed? Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any other questions? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. We will now consider the consent agenda, which is items one through seven. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the consent agenda, or are there any items that we need to move to the regular agenda? Move for approval. Second. Been properly moved and second. Any discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number eight. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of resolution number 2820, amending the land use map regarding property located in the 600 block of South Main, more particularly described in the resolution from local commercial to multifamily residential, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the land use map of the city to reflect said change. We'll now open a public hearing. Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Council Mayor. Uh, Council members, this is a request from the city of Muskogee to change the land use map. Currently, it is uh, designated to be local commercial. It is a request to change it to multifamily residential. This is to allow for the rezoning request that will be presented next for approval. This is the site. It's located on South Main. Closer look and we'll uh, identify the surrounding properties and uses. There is some residential on the west side and then uh, commercial there along Main Street. This is the uh, property looking to, towards the west. And this is on 2nd Street looking east. The request is to go from the local commercial zoning classification uh, in the future and the two multifamily residentials to allow again for the rezoning request to be heard. And staff, planning commission, and public works recommended approval. I'll be happy to answer any questions. We don't have anyone who signed up to speak to the public hearing. We will now close it and ask if there are any questions or comments from the council. Yes, ma'am, be able to recognize. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was wondering, did anyone check into the, the turning lane about with ODOC? Um, not the turning lane, but the access. Yes. Access, yeah. Yes, she has um, contacted ODOT. They came out the next day. They've uh, preliminarily approved a an access, uh, identified the area, and they all are already starting their paperwork. It should be a couple of weeks, and she would have access. Like I said, I'm glad <coughs> glad to see things are moving in more mm -hmm. three, especially on Main Street. It's a blessing. Front the floor back over you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Van. Any other questions or comments, or do we have a motion for approval? Move for approval. Second. Been moved and second. Further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number nine. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of ordinance number 4097A to rezone the north 79 feet of lot, lot 16, block 62, Muskogee Original Town Site, City of Muskogee, from R5 Mobile Home Residential to R4 Multifamily Residential, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change or take other necessary action. We will now open the public hearing. Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Mayor Council. This is a request from Dr. Jean Rogers. It is to rezone the property that is currently an R5 mobile home residential zoning classification to a multifamily. It is to allow for the development of duplexes, more than one, uh, depending on the layout, um, hopefully having uh, two or more. This is the site again. You'll see the surrounding properties. You have the Seventh Day Adventist, a car wash, Double K Burgers, and then single family uh, residential to the west. And as this map, I've added the um, island, the median center median, and it does show the location of the median and adjacent to those properties. However, she will have access from 
Main Street now with ODOT going uh, southbound and then she'll have access off of Second Street both ways. This is the current zoning map. It does show the property there that is zoned R5, uh, R5 mobile home and the request is to go to the R4 multifamily residential. It does comply now with the land use map, future um, comprehensive plan. Staff, Planning Commission, and Public Works recommended approval. Be happy to answer any questions, and the applicant is here if you have any questions that I'm unable to answer. We don't have anyone who signed up to speak to this item. We will now close the public hearing. Do we <coughs> have any comments or a motion from the council? Move for approval. <coughs> second. It's been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number 10. Nine. Nine. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of ordinance number 4101A to rezone 600 North Main, particularly described in the ordinance from I-1 Light Industrial to C-2 General Commercial, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change or take other necessary action. We'll now open the public hearing, Ms. Callahan. Thank you, Mayor, Council Members. This is a request from the property owners, Muskogee 600 LLC, to rezone the property that is currently in industrial zoning classification I-1 to the correct zoning classification for the future development of a Dollar Tree store. Here's the site and surrounding areas. You've got uh, Office Depot, Green Country Behavioral Health. There's a used car lot to the north. There's a vacant warehouse that was Glen Smith Oil Company. Across the street is the convenience store with the gas station. Then you have the Union Pacific offices surrounding it. This is the look from the Office Depot. They are requesting to go to the C2 General Commercial. It is an appropriate zone for a store rather than the industrial, and it complies with the future land use map and comprehensive plan. Would not uh, create a negative impact, would actually improve the area, and staff, planning commission, and public works recommended approval. Be happy to answer any questions. We don't have anyone who signed up to speak to this item. We will now close the public hearing. Let me say that that's a very walkable area, and so certainly we are excited about any development along North or South Main and excited about the opportunity for another venue to serve our residents. Do we have any other comments or motion to approve from the council? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and second. Any other discussion? I had a question on that. Uh, as we rezone in that location, which is directly across from the mall, are we going to yeah. uh, consider rezoning the mall? The mall's um, currently Central Business District, and um, actually the Central Business District allows for more use than most of the other, some of the other commercial zoning classifications, so it would allow for I'm the, talking a mixed commercial use. use. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments from the council? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, the item passes. Item number 11. Receive report on the COVID-19 pandemic in Muskogee, and if necessary, take appropriate action to authorize and approve a subsequent amendment to resolution number 2801, declaring a local emergency, or city-county joint resolution number 2803. Just prior to yielding the floor to Mr. Miller, let me say to all of our residents regarding COVID-19, if not us, then who? If not now, then when? President John F. Kennedy asked this question to the American people nearly 60 years ago as a challenge, not to allow others to find us as Americans, but so that Americans, we would challenge ourselves to be better than our past. Today, nearly 60 years later, I asked the people of Muskogee again, if not us, who? If not now, when? With every well-laid plan we have before us for our city, the underlying nemesis is COVID-19. But this is a nemesis that can be defeated if we have the same will and determination asked of us by President's past. We are the generation you asked to lead, and now is the time you've called us to act. I hate masks. I hate passing the routine opportunity to greet you with a hug or a handshake. But desperate measures and times require us to do abnormal in order to defeat an indiscriminate foe who has no legs, no hands, no human form, yet the simple power to wipe out whole economies and families through the power of droplets. Muskogee, 
if not us, who else to wear a mask or protect social distancing, protect us by using social distancing when it matters the most? If not now, then it will become important for us to safeguard our futures by doing whatever we can to save lives and honor our children's longevity. I'm asking every elected official from the hallways of municipal government to the hollow chambers of the state capitol to walk away from petty arguments that divide us about who should wear and not wear and focus on the business of government, which is to temper justice against mercy in our requirements and for the public to do what we must so that government's requirements do not impede on our basic freedoms. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Miller at this time. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council. Uh, I appreciate you having me here. Uh, we, I do want to give you updates uh, on specifically what we're doing uh, with the city as a workplace, as well as the uh, masks uh, that we have initiated the purchase on, thanks to your uh, foresight last week. But before I do that, I do think it'd be good to get a situational report, an update about where we are now, compared to say where we were last week when we met. And before uh, to do that, I'm gonna bring forward Tyler Evans um, and he will have some other guests that will give us updates and then I'll come back to the podium and give you uh, more information from my perspective. Thank you. Good afternoon, mayor, members of council. In front of you, you should have the, uh, the report you're used to seeing by now, you know it's a little bit different. I uh, had some counselors uh, ask about some graphs, some charts, so that's been added to this report to help out uh, visualize the numbers a little bit better. Uh, there are currently 124 active cases in Muskogee County and 90 active cases in the city. For the city, this is an increase of 24 active cases since Friday and 37 since Monday uh, at our last council meeting. Um, over the past week, we've seen a pretty significant increase in the number of active cases in the community. Now, I won't, I won't read through all the stats and percentages because for the most part, they change by a partial percentage point one way or another. It's a small change when it comes to the percentages. But I would like to point out the line graph for the city of Muskogee cumulative cases there on the front page. Let's take a look at that, please. As you can see, we've seen a pretty steep in increase from July 20th to July 27th. It's just a one week period. That's an increase of 79 cumulative cases here in the city of Muskogee. We're up to 258 right now. If you flip over to the next page, please, and look at the, uh, the line chart for the active cases in the city of Muskogee. As you can tell from a one week period, that's a pretty sharp increase in the number of active cases here in the community. We went from 53 on July 20th. Today, we're at 90 active cases on July 27th. So it's an increase of 37 in one week period. And as you can see, it's been mapped back till June 15th. And so far, that's been our, uh, our highest increase in the community. Uh, the rest of the percentages that we've been talking about over the past couple of weeks are included in this report. As I stated earlier, it's not a, a huge change, but uh, those percentages have been mapped into uh, pie charts uh, at the request that some of the counselors had. Uh, now, Ms. McGee, uh, last week you had asked about the percentage of ICU beds available and some of the other beds. I went back and looked back a couple of days to kind of compare that to give you guys an idea of how much that changes. Three days ago on Friday, ICU beds were at a 21% availability, and today they're at 23%, so a 2% increase since Friday. 22% medical surgery beds were available on Friday, and today 24% are available. However, operating rooms are down to 66% as opposed to 71% on Friday. So three of them came up a couple percentage points, and one of them went down by about four. So that's been kind of the ongoing rate. It's just a couple percentage points about every day. It kind of bounces back and forth. There's really no good way to predict which way they're gonna go. Uh, with that, this is kind of sums up my update right now. Unless anybody has any questions uh, for the graphs or the maps or any of the numbers I've given you. I don't have any particular uh, questions about the graphs or the charts, but uh, yes, sir. we're fortunate on our council to have a physician, Dr. Who's, who's been in conversations with us over the weekend. He had some other information that I think he might want to share at this time. Oh, great. Um, I think that uh, what I was understanding that was being asked last week is kind of a, a percent change. Everyone, you know, kind of like where are we at and how it's changing because it is, you know, the way it moves. But some of the things that I think that might help that some of the questions that we had was so last week we had. Um, 246 total cases, 50 of those were brand new. Now this is county data, not city, okay? 50 of those was brand new, so that's brand new cases counted for 20% of total cases. 
as of for this week, you're at 333, I believe, and uh, 87 uh, of those were new cases for county. Again, this is county, not city, which that means 26% are, are new cases. So you're seeing it go up. You know, your percentage is going up. So it's 20% last week, 6% this week. Using the numbers that Tyler gave us to, I mean, we're sitting at 90 active cases with those 37 of those are new cases this week. So that's a 40, 41%. Now, with that being said, last week was whenever they had the big mix-up with the data with the state and things kind of came out wrong. So it's not absolute, but I think that's kind of some of the things, questions that y'all had, like what was the change that was going on? So it's going up. Now it's going up with the, the yellow, green, I mean the green, yellow, orange, the, the 6% still keeps us at a yellow as of today, I believe where we were at. Now, how much you agree with those maps and stuff, that's debatable, but that's where we're at today. Do we have any other questions for count, uh, from the council? And to speak on some good news, as we talked about the number of cumulative cases going up, the number of active cases going up, some good news is the recovery last week, we were at 114 people for the city. Today we're at 156, so we've had 42 more people recovered from COVID-19 uh, from last week. Uh, if nobody has any other questions for me, I'd like to introduce Doug Walton with the Muskogee County Health Department uh, to give an update from the health department. Can you explain what recover means in Muskogee? Sure. Uh, I'll let Doug test on that a little bit. Uh, I know we went back from having uh, 14 days, no symptoms, to having a test negative. Uh, I'll ask Doug with the health department because the uh, it has changed since we started this as far as testing for recovery and when somebody is marked as recovered okay. uh, in the system. So I'll let Doug actually touch, uh, touch on what counts as a recovered subject. Thank and you. the data, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, uh, Tyler and uh, Council. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, uh, the currently uh, recovered uh, does mean um, uh, 14 days uh, since the beginning uh, of symptoms or not hospitalized. And so it is a, it is a fairly uh, broad or maybe even could say loose definition for recovery. Um, it really does not actually capture uh, patients who are no longer hospitalized uh, who may still have symptoms. Um, but uh, the, the, the state has chosen to use that definition according to CDC protocols, and, um, and I, I think it's mo you know, mostly just based on the, on the uh, epidemiological data that suggests after that point um, most cases are resolved. Thank you, Doug. Um, sure. Uh, and then just uh, maybe some um, really uh, not a lot of additional um, information to report other than just confirming uh, that uh, cases are active cases are continuing to increase in the county and the city. Um, and we are continuing to do uh, testing at the health department every day, averaging 60 to 70. Uh, tests collected uh, drive through uh, from 8.30 to 10.30. Uh, no appointment is necessary. Um, we do also do the rapid testing, uh, which uh, requires that a person is uh, symptomatic and has uh, at least one other criteria, um, either uh, close contact with a confirmed case over the age of 65 or uh, another uh, risk factor, comorbidity. Uh, and, and to get a rapid test uh, does actually require an appointment. Uh, that, that phone number is 918-912-2160. Uh, if you don't happen to um, get a person but instead uh, a uh, answering machine, please leave your name and number and you will receive a call within an hour or two. Um, and then really we're just continuing to um, reiterate the importance of wearing face coverings whenever in public and maintaining a distance of at least six feet, six feet from others um, and washing hands frequently, uh, especially before or after eating or touching your face. And I'll be happy to take any questions. Doug, this is Mayor Coleman. I have a follow-up question to what Councilwoman McGee asked. In terms of recovery, does that also include people who are asymptomatic? Well, it does. Um, I mean, it's including anyone that tested positive. 
So they, they get on the board once they've got a positive test and we, we get that counted for the county. And then um, if uh, basically they use the, the 14 days as um, symptoms or from, uh, from a test date. So I didn't really include that, but that's, um, that's another way that they're, they're measuring um, for those that, that didn't have symptoms. And then, um, uh, then of course, you know, if, they, if they didn't have symptoms, they would have never been hospitalized. The reason I ask that is because there's always been concern about how the state formula actually factors into what we actually know is in our community. And when they say uh, the state does that, um, you know, no symptoms, I was curious about those people who demonstrate no symptoms by being asymptomatic and how those numbers were factored in. It, it's a great point. And I think it's, it, it is yet another reason uh, to you know, reinforce the importance of the uh, of the safe measures and and the uh, and the face covering because any one of us could be asymptomatic uh, and 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 not have uh, gotten uh, a test and not know that we're spreading it. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to remind our viewers at home that's following along that this data that I'm talking about is available at the City of Muskogee Emergency Management Facebook uh, page. Go there, there's a link to box.com. You can click on that. I've tried it on uh, my cell phone, I've tried it on the computer. I'll take you straight to the document. You can view it there, you can download it, print it from there. But uh, this information that we're talking about right now is available at the uh, Facebook page, the City of Muskogee Emergency Management page. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, Trish German from Muskogee County EMS. Good evening. Um, Muskogee County EMS, we've noticed our call volume has increased. It's almost coming back to our normal. However, it's not all COVID related. We are still getting some high acuity calls and other medical conditions um, type events like that. Heat related problems, guys, it's hot out there. Need to remind the citizens that if you are outside and you are wearing your face covering to make sure you hydrate well, go inside, relax and rest a little bit make sure you're drinking plenty of water another thing about the heat is leaving kids and pets in their vehicles um, i always try to explain to new parents that they should put a bag or their cell phone in the back seat with their child so if they do get out they'll remember to pick that up and get their child out of the car um, we're still disinfecting like we're supposed to, fogging our units um, if we have any patients that are possible um, COVID-related, um, fogging our stations and any other facilities that need to be fogged for us. Does anybody have any questions? Trish, where are we with the education piece that we have been talking about that we can put in the water bills to our residents? That sh you, I sent an email out last week. Okay. If you haven't gotten it, I'll get with you tomorrow. Sounds good. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Mr. Mayor, if there's no other questions for me or the speakers, I'd like to turn the floor back over to Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller. Thank you. Um, so a couple updates I want to give real quick. Uh, first, um, again, last, last week, Council uh, did something that not very many cities have done, which is realize that if masks are important, we need to make those available to our citizens. Um, and so this is a way that I think Muskogee is on the leading edge. Uh, we have uh, placed an order for 100,000 masks to be distributed. Uh, we anticipate hopefully being able to start that distribution next week. Um, and so uh, I, I want to give you an update on that. The mask I am wearing uh, is uh, a sample mask from the vendor. And so it, this is a cloth mask. It, it can be washed and reused. It stretches. It's breathable. Uh, it's relatively comfortable if you need to wear it for any length of time. So every, everybody has their own kind of mask that they feel that is best for them. Uh, so this may or may not be it, but what we're trying to do is give people the very first, uh, make sure everybody has, has the ability to protect their neighbor and to wear a mask. And so I uh, just want to give you that update. Um, we're excited that, that that process is underway and I want to thank you guys again for being a leader uh, in Oklahoma and doing that as a, as a community. 
Um, secondly, uh, we talked about last week was uh, reexamining our workplace protocols, right? We have two roles here as the city. Number one, uh, you guys are the policy making body for uh, for the city, and so uh, how do we regulate and how do we try and, and work with public health and private uh, health providers on preventing this disease in our community? And then second, we are also an employer. We, we have employees uh, that, that uh, work every day. They, they interact with the public and they interact with each other. So it's important for us that we are also following best practices to keep our employees safe when they're at work and to keep the public safe when they're interacting with our employees. And so um, through this last week, I've been visiting with different department heads, uh, working with uh, our HR department, and Kelly uh, has been very helpful in, in, in preparing uh, some of the best practices that we've got moving forward. Um, a couple of things that we've done, we've ordered um, uh, several thousand of what, what I'll call the blue masks that many of you are wearing, the disposable uh, masks that our employees can wear on the job. Um, we're going to ask them to do that, especially when they're in vehicles with other employees or with other people. Uh, a lot of our uh, a lot of our employees work out in the field; they're out in the public, and so uh, if they're outside using machinery or, or working on the streets, they may not necessarily need a mask given the social distancing and being outside. But it, when they get in the truck to go, uh, you know, back to the shop. They need to have a mask on. Uh, same with our, our sanitation workers. Everybody that uh, that that you know gets in the confines of a vehicle, we want them to have a mask. So we've got them uh, some uh, you know temporary masks, uh, some ma non-reusable masks that they can use. We've got uh, several thousand of those so that we can distribute those. Um, secondly, um, we are going to uh, have uh, asked that all employees wear masks inside of our city facilities when they're not in their own or at their own workspace. So if they're going in a common area in the hallway, the elevator, the, um, uh, the stairwell, going to the restroom, if you're going to run into somebody, bump into somebody, say hi to somebody, then you'll have your mask on. If you're able to go to uh, someone's office and you can social distance, uh, you may be able to take your mask off. But in, in between, not. If you're in your own workspace, you need to have it on. Um, thirdly, uh, we are asking that the public, when they come do business with us, uh, that they are going to be asked to wear a mask. We're going to protect our employees and we're also going to protect the citizens that we are in contact with by asking them to wear masks when they come uh, to a city facility. And along those lines, we're going to uh, make doing business in a city facility an appointment only event. Again, we're rolling back some of uh, of the, the openness measures that we took. Um, as you guys are well aware, today was a record setting day in Oklahoma for number of COVID-19 cases in our state. And so uh, to protect our employees and to protect the public, uh, we're, we're still gonna provide services as much as we can over the phone, online, via email. Um, and if we need to deal uh, with a citizen issue face to face, we'll do that. And we'll ask you to call and make an appointment and we'll know you're coming. And, We'll all wear our masks and we'll take care of business and get the business of the city of Muskogee taken care of. Um, those are uh, some of the highlights of the, the proposals that we're, uh, that we're putting together. Um, we uh, will look at work from home uh, policies when, uh, when possible. Uh, and the, there's not uh, necessarily that many jobs that we can do from home, but if, if, if it's needed and if a person can be productive working from home, we will look into that as well. Um, so those are updates I wanted to give you on uh, just us as an employer and how we're looking out for uh, our employees, trying to keep each other healthy. Uh, if, we're, if our employees aren't healthy, they can't do the jobs that the public expects us to do, and that's very important. Uh, their health is very important. And then, of course, our employees do come into contact with the public, and we want the public to be safe when they uh, come into contact with our employees. Um, so that being said, those are our, our proposals. Um, uh, those are the, the administrative actions that we're looking to take um, as far as uh, workplace safety, and I wanted to update you on those things as well. Uh, I'll be happy to take questions on either of those things or any other topic related to COVID-19 that you may have for me. Do we have any questions for Mr. Miller from the council? Mr. Tucker, do we need to, or Mr. Miller, do we need to formally adopt these recommendations? Uh, there's, there's not really a need. Okay. Um, uh, there's, this is, uh, again, administrative work that we do, uh, and certainly, 
uh, if you guys give your tacit blessing, if there's no objections, these are the ways we're going to be moving forward, uh, but there's not a need for a formal adoption. Um, city manager, mm -hmm. would you say that is, that is the city's mitigation plan? Well, we do have a mitigation plan for various departments that is uh, that we have published. This is additional. Um, so yes and no. Yes, I, th I think it's probably an addition or an update to our existing mitigation plan. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. I had to get my head back into into that uh, into that world. But yes, I think it is an, an addition to. Let me say I'm excited by the fact that we're leading by example because we had asked our. Uh, business partners around the city to voluntarily update their mitigation plan to notify us of what they plan to do about masks. And I think this signal that we're sending tonight that we're willing to be a leader goes a long way towards us trying to stay in the yellow, uh, as Dr. Hoos had referenced earlier, so that we don't uh, advance or participate in a community spread to the best of our uh, abilities. And so I thank you for putting that together as part of our city mitigation plan. Any other comments for council? Mr. Miller, anything else on item number 11? Uh, I have nothing else. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 12. Consider and take action with respect to mandating the wearing of face coverings in accordance with CDC guidelines for all members of the public who enter and while at any city owned and or operated facilities directing the city manager to establish and enforce a policy for the wearing of face coverings for employees of said facilities and further authorizing and directing an amendment to resolution number 2801 in accordance therewith. Mr. Van. Yes, Mayor. Uh, before I uh, say anything about my item, can I mention one thing? For yes. About two, a minute. Just what I have in front of me is uh, a thing when I go to the National League of Cities that I put around my neck. And it has, you go to this little stand and you get little stickers. And I got one on there that says perfection, trouble, slacker, stuff like that. They give it to you and put it, you know, say what you are. So in recognition of uh, Council, uh, Congressman John uh, Lewis, I was watching today on uh, CNN. They was having his, his casket at the Capitol and they had a ceremony. And on their mask, they had good trouble. So I thought, I looked in my closet when I was getting dressed and I seen that uh, badge right there. So I thought I'd bring and hang it in front of me in recognition of him tonight because they're going to have his service. They're going to have some more other services, but they're going to have his main service uh, Thursday. Mm -hmm. So because uh, Congressman uh, Lewis, you know, he marched across the bridge. They're going to name the bridge after him. And it was a great deal the other, yesterday on TV where his horse and buggy went across the bridge with his family. So he, pay, he, 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 paid, he, he paid the price. He had to get beat up, go to jail, and everything else. But sometime, we have to pay the price. Even up here, we have to pay the price. So I just wanted to uh, recognize Congressman Lewis and just to let you know why I got this hanging in front of my monitor tonight. Thank you. This is my item, agenda item, and uh, I just want to thank Brad Smith over at the courthouse. Because right after we got through voting, that 63 vote about mandating for our whole city. Well, Britt Smith, uh, Judge Smith, he took it to the county and they mandated masks going in the county and they, with their employees. And uh, I know masks are important. That's our safety. Because I'll, I'll give everybody in this room tonight an applause. That's right. You know why I'm doing that? is because I see everybody That's with right. masks. That's right. Because now we realize this is serious. You know, I, was to I told you last week, and I'm gonna say this. I know y'all get tired of me saying old sayings and my grandma and mom used to tell me. <coughs> when it goes in this ear and not the other, a lot of times I, when I was a kid, that's what they used to tell me. Boy, it's going in this ear and not the other. But I see up here, it went in the ear when it tried to go out the other, but y'all got the message now. That this stuff is real. This ain't no joke. And what gets me is uh, what I said last week was, I said that sometime it's got to come home in order to get you right. If you got it in your family and you see the people over in uh, Korea, China, every time we watch TV, they always had these masks on. You didn't see nobody walking around without them. 
But since we got it up here in our city, and it's at home, I'm not going to say the people's names, but it's right here, and y'all knew it. That's right. And uh, so that's kind of got our attention up here. It took something. God got our attention. If it wasn't, these masks wouldn't be on y'all's face tonight. And I told Mr. Miller, another thing is, that when we go to these mics and spread our droplets in them, these masks need to be on our face. That's another thing. It don't do you no good to throw this mask off and just get all up in this mic. That's another thing. Also, ask Mr. Miller, if, if this passed tonight and somebody don't, don't have a mask, they shouldn't be allowed to come in here, but since we don't got spent this money on these extra masks, there's no reason nobody can come to our council meeting without a mask. They can have them right there at the back door if they don't have a mask. <clears throat> Another thing is, I was driving around yesterday, I just shook my head. It was sad. Went to the water park, kids, 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 kids. People, people, people. Baseball fields, people, people, people. No social distancing. They act like it was, you know, ain't nothing going on. We're getting ready to have a deal uh, Friday for our city employees. But I've been to everyone since I've been on council meeting. But I can't come Friday because there's no social distancing there. We're going to be giving hot dogs out with masks on, but then, then people are going to be right in our face. It's hard to do it at a water park with a, with a mask. So I can't make it this year. But I hope that tonight this don't be no 6 to 3 vote. Because God's still up here, it's always 6 to 3 when I, I bring something to the council. Tonight, I hope it's all of us, all nine, that mandates this, you know, up here tonight. Because this, this right here, the only thing we're trying to do is protect ourselves, just like Mr. Miller said, and protect our citizens. So I hope that when we walk around our city and go in our silly facilities and come, through this, come to this council and come up here, or we come to visit up here, that we bring a mask. If we don't, they'll give us one. That's all I'm asking tonight is do the right thing. This time, do the right thing. Let's put a mask on and keep it on right here in the city of Muskogee with our facilities, all city facilities. And people on the trash route, wear those masks. People in the water department, wear those masks. When you're in the office, I can understand when you're by yourself, you gotta take your mask off and you don't even have one on. But when somebody come in your office, put that mask on. So that's what I'm asking tonight, that we pass this, man to mandate these masks for the city of Muskogee so we can protect each other and everybody can go home safely. So if I have to, I'll make a motion. It's okay? Yes. I'll make a motion to mandate wearing masks in, on all city property at Forest facilities, coming into city council, uh, in offices, all around, to have masks on when, you, when, you, when, you, you know, when you're around people. You can try to social distance, but that's my motion to wear a mask and make a mandate, not just recommend, mandated. We have a motion from Councilor Van. Do we have a second? Second that motion. We have a motion and a second. We have further discussion. Mr. Miller, I saw your hand up. Yes, yes, thank you. I, I don't mean to interpose. I know the council need, uh, is certainly needs to discuss among themselves. I do want to say, Councilor Van reached out to me last week about this agenda item. He knew that we were working on our workplace protocol. He said, do I need to put this on the agenda or not? I said, fine, yeah, let's put it on the agenda. Uh, it's not probably, it's the direction we were heading with our workplace protocol anyway. This vote is not uh, counter to anything that we just discussed. It is very similar, or probably it's, it's the same as what we just discussed. So I just wanted to clear that up, that this is, uh, something that I'd spoken with Councilor Van about earlier and it's not anything different than what I've just discussed. So Mr. Tucker, I just want a uh, legal clarification that we are prepared to basically formalize what Mr. Miller presented. That's exactly right. Okay. Uh, what Mr. Miller presented was an administrative remedy. This remedy would be a policy decision from the council. And so that means that if you made that uh, decision to incorporate that into our emergency resolution, then it would remain there until you chose to remove it versus an administrative inclusion that it would be up to the city manager to make that decision. 
but effectively um, what uh, Councillor Van's item would do is mandate the wearing of masks in accordance with CDC guidelines for anyone who enters or remains in, in a uh, city owned or operated facility as well as directing the manager to uh, formalize a plan for dealing with employees which is, is what he's already discussed. And this will not conflict with anything that you're already preparing for staff? Okay. Mr. Mayor, may I make one more point? Yes. <laughs> my point is, I started not saying anything, but you know me, I got <laughs> something on my mind, I just can't go home without it saying it. You know, uh, we watched the video of the police the other day. We all watched that video. You know, everybody watched the video. One thing troubled me on that video was, in the video, another video before that one, that the police officers, they were near the person, but didn't have masks on. That was a problem to me. Just like the other, the other this, this last week on this video, the police was near that victim, and no mask was on her or them, right next, just like, you know, right there on her. Knee in her, knee in her back, which was, I think was wrong there. And this woman was supposed to be pregnant. But it's things like that. Toss officers, they, they adopted this a while, while back. Their officers had masks on. But I've seen none of our police officers with masks on. There's two situations. You had a man walking down the street one day. They pulled him over, and he was, they knew him. But they got right next to him, no mask, nothing. But they treated him with dignity and respect. I'll give, I'll give them that. But they need to protect our citizens, also, by putting these masks on, and then also themselves. So that's just my two cents that I, I almost left out. Forgot about that. So I'll turn the floor over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Before we go any further, Mr. Van, I want to clarify one thing. Uh, in your motion, you referenced the mandate, mandated wearing of masks while entering or remaining in city facilities, but you didn't reference the remaining part of the agenda item directing the city manager to adopt a uh, policy for uh, wearing of masks for employees. Did you intend that to be included in your motion? Yes, sir. I just wanted to clarify that, Mayor. And Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Reed, did you intend yes. that to be in your second? Thank you. Do we have any other uh, comments from the council? I have a question. Um, Mike. Yeah, sorry, it snuck up on it. Uh, you said that uh, you're already working on uh, this for employees. Mm -hmm. What you're working on, will it also uh, have to do with people coming into the buildings? Yes. So basically what you're working on already is what we're also talking about right now? Yes. So it... Just to, yes, to answer your question, um, we have uh, procedures ready to go. I knew we had this meeting tonight, so I thought, let's wait in here, right? The, the, the council direction. Uh, but yes, there's not anything uh, different that, that's being proposed uh, through this motion than we're considering uh, as a policy um, for our employees and for the public visiting our facilities. Does either way take place faster or if we let if we go through your policy will it take place? At no, we're, the we're ready time? we're we're ready to go at either way I mean that's the it, like I said, we, we, we had done all the work leading up to today, and I knew we had the council meeting tonight, and I said, why bother, why roll it out this morning when the council uh, has it to speak about tonight? Let's get the feedback from the council, but it's ready to go. So we're reinforcing what you've already presented. The only difference is the date of expiration. At such point, when it becomes necessary, you'll make recommendations to us about what you think at that time well and to to clarify further the the agenda item said for us to come back with a a uh, amended resolution if we do that then when that resolution uh, emergency resolution expires it would all expire or it okay. could be taken out point by point that's that's not accurate oh uh, forgive me <laughs> I, we didn't compare <laughs> notes before i said that so my apologies <laughs> if i got that wrong uh, just to clarify, the agenda item authorizes the drafting and execution of the resolution based upon what you all do tonight. Roy, can I ask, ask a question? No. Oh, Mr. Reflect. Yes, yes. Roy, can I ask a question, please? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, paying attention to some of the Facebook comments that are coming in. So how will this affect ballparks, 
and those in parks as well when it comes to this. Is this just for facility buildings only? Um, it is for all city facilities. There are, in an, it is in accordance with CDC guidelines. So there are provisions in the CDC guidelines that when you are um, use, utilizing, when you're playing uh, sports, anything that would uh, cause you to uh, have struggle breathing, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be appropriate to wear a mask, similar for swimming uh, and those type of things. Thank you. And that is what we had proposed because we're already in that phase with the CDC where that is allowed. Okay, any other comments from the council or are we ready to vote? I just want to make one comment. Uh, in Oklahoma, you know we got the hot spots, right? Altus, Claremore, and then our neighboring brother, Tahlequah. And we in and out of Tahlequah every day. So I just want to put that on your mind as well as we go move forward to vote. Any other comments from our colleagues? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? No. Alex Reynolds? No. Evelyn Hibbs? No. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Thank you. Item number 13. Consider approval of the cooperative agreement between the City of Muskogee and Neighbors Building Neighborhoods for the purpose of, of applying for grants and grant activities on behalf of the City and other not-for-profit activities that enhance the economic well-being of the Muskogee community or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin, before you make any presentation, let me remind the Council that this is only on the agenda instead of being on the consent agenda because there was an abstention. I'm going to move that we adopt as previously presented. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Abstain. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 14. Consider approval of a cooperative agreement between the City of Muskogee and Muskogee County Public Transit Authority to provide public transportation services within the City of Muskogee or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin, before you speak again, I'm going to say that I believe that the information that was requested uh, in the last meeting has been provided to the Council. I'm going to ask, do they have any questions on the new information or will we accept a motion to proceed with an approval? If there are any questions on the previous documents that have been submitted. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The item passes. Item number 15. Consider approval of the sole bid from Warfeather LLC in the amount of $34,705 for the COVID-19 City Hall remodel or take other necessary action. Mr. Garvin. This is for our COVID-19 City Hall remodel project, which includes installing a new wall, door with card reader for access, safety glass. We'll have a three inch pass through underneath the safety glass and a Speco. And this will be installed in the city clerk's office and water revenue on the first floor. Uh, we did send bid packets out. We sent it to five contractors. We also published it in the paper. We only received one bid. The bid was from Warfeather in the amount of $34,705. Warfeather is a local, well-established contractor. We feel his price is appropriate. And due to the time frame with the COVID-19, we want to go ahead and move forward with this project. So we're asking that you approve the sole bid. I'd uh, be glad to answer any questions. Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second. The question I have is this uh, possible uh, reimbursable for FEMA? Correct, it is. And Mr. Tucker, if I'm out of order, you'll correct me, but I think we should have mentioned earlier on the masks uh, that we're purchasing. That's also uh, a reimbursable item uh, that we're looking for for the masks that we're providing to the residents. It's been moved and second. Do we have any further discussion? Mr. <coughs> Member of your class. Yes. You know, I'm glad I'm proud of this project here. Really am, because that's more security. 
feel like, you know, when I went to the National League of Cities, I learned something and went to, every time I go to the National League of Cities, I always go to their city hall and see how it looks. Just like downstairs tonight. I am so proud. Every time I leave here, I go down there and I thank that officer for being down there to protect us while we're up here. And so I feel like we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, all these places I've been. They had, when you walk in to see the city clerk or the water revenue, they had bars or they had panels where you couldn't, you know, just stick your hand under. So I'm proud that we finally got on that page. I'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Mayor. Thank Mr. you. Mayor. Thank you. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Abstain. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number 16. Consider approval of change order number two to construction contract with McGuire Brothers for the 30-inch water line improvements project for a relocation of an 8-inch conflicting water line or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes, this change order is uh, to relocate an 8-inch water line that uh, was not uh, shown on the plan set, so it came into conflict in the field. And what they did was they uh, changed to a high-density uh, polyethylene pipe and they went from an eight inch to a 10 inch and actually bridged over the 30 inch pipe and was able to uh, move that project along. This is only a $5,666 change order. It uh, was definitely necessary and I'll answer any questions. Do we have any questions for Mr. Stewart or motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. It's been properly moved and second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number 17. Receive report on the operations of the War Memorial Park, including an update on the status of FEMA projects relating to the 2019 flood and its impacts on the USS Batfish, and consider approval of matching grant funds in the amount of $24,826 and take other necessary action. Mr. Miller. Yes, my comments will be very brief. Uh, the council authorized a year ago, uh, just after the flood, to use matching grant funds to help uh, support the batfish's operations while uh, they were in recovery mode and that is why the matching portion is on the agenda also i know you probably be ready for an update on the status of the batfish and the fema re uh, project to get it back in place and back open and so mr trout is here to address that thank you mr mayor city council thank you for having me here tonight uh, i just wanted to go over what we're doing at the batfish here we have reopened on june 6th we are following all of our mitigation plans. We clean, sanitize, we are masked up when any other public is there. We have also reduced our capacity down to half percent or 50 percent. So our goal is to make sure people are going through in a guided manner so that they don't actually come across parties that they're not associated with. Uh, besides that, we've been working with FEMA. So as you'll remember, this has gone on for way too long so far. It's over a year now. We've gone through four program managers and we've discovered that, quite frankly, we're a unique situation with FEMA and they have discovered this as well. So now we are working directly with a CRC supervisor who is managing our project. So if, as you see in the report that I submitted, we have gone to the CRC, which is the Consolidated Resource Center. This is where all the final decisions are made on your project, and then it gets approved by Congress, and then the money gets issued. We've gone back and forth three times from the CRC back to the Batfish. So part of the problem with this is the COVID situation. FEMA is not actually able to come on site and do anything. So a lot of it requires me to take pictures, measurements, and then draw sketches on what they're looking at. That's caused a considerable delay, but we are back in the CRC. We have submitted multiple projects to them. So we have submitted a mitigation project, which basically means leave the batfish where it currently is after the flood damage, right on the side here. Stabilize it there so it saves money, but also prevents any future flooding from moving it or as they prefer to move it back into the original location. Why, I have no idea. So <clears throat> one of the problems that we've had is that the Department of Environmental Quality doesn't like the idea of us flooding the park to move a submarine over. So we worked with our engineers in a pre-construction company to come up with an idea, and it is actually putting the batfish on jacks and skidding it into place if we need to go that route. FEMA loves it, Department of Environmental Quality loves it, 
and so does historic preservation. The idea of skidding it over is much safer than actually just flooding and hoping water doesn't go back into the bad fish. So right now we have moved from what they call a fixed cost offer, which is they were going to say, we're going to give you 1.5 million to fix the bad fish, here you go. We are in an improved project status. So they have combined mitigation with the fixed cost original condition. And we're going to get the, the mitigation options that we selected, which are a winching system, improved piers, and a gangway that actually rises with water. So in the event of another flood like we had in May, the bad fish will rise. We use the winching system to loosen it so it floats. And then we can tighten it down as the water recedes and it goes right back in place where it is supposed to go and this will not happen again. So <clears throat> with that being said, we're back in the CRC stage. We are waiting for FEMA to give us the go ahead and to disperse the funds. And I gave you a timeline in your packet. Right now our updated timeline is looking between January and November, November and January of this year or into the next year. And if you have any other questions, this is such a unique situation moving a submarine that uh, FEMA's never actually dealt with this before. Thank you for the update, Brent. That's exciting to see the progress of- It's exciting uh, and scary at the same time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In terms of where we are and how we get to where we're going, uh, is it necessary that we engage other consultants to come in or are we on the track that we need to be on? So that's a very good question, Mr. Mayor. So we, uh, we are in a kind of a weird spot right now. CRC has asked over 36 questions to our engineers and they've provided everything that they can provide at the current status that we're at. Quite frankly, we can't give them more details until we do it. You know, it, it's all conceptual right now. We don't know what we're facing until we actually do it because this has never been done before. So the engineers are recommending that we hire a construction manager at risk to go ahead and start the process as far as making the design into reality before FEMA gives us the funding. So that is actually one of the reasons why we wanted this match so that we could get that as well. But we have no direction from FEMA on this because quite frankly, they, they don't know what to do with us. That was the reason why I asked that question because I wouldn't want us to get to the end of the timeline and find out that there were other bottlenecks in the system that we weren't aware of. This, this is 100% why we're taking our time and we're not pushing FEMA. So one of the benefits to doing this as detailed as possible is that FEMA will release a check to us. So if they say, hey, the project we think is gonna cost you $2 million and it comes in at 1.5, we owe no money out of our share. So the better we do our job with estimating and providing all the details, the likelihood of us not having to contribute our 25% or 12.5% is higher, which saves everybody money. So is it, is it their recommendation about the construction manager at risk or is that something we're considering? Our engineers have told us to consider it because the engineers cannot provide any more details without actually moving towards that. FEMA, I've asked for their advice on it and they're consulting each other and their, their management to figure out what to do with us in regards to that. And the There's a risk manager. with that. So a construction manager could overstep bounds and bid outside of the bidding processes of FEMA and that's one of the things that we have to be leery about. If we interrupt the bidding process and don't follow it to a T, it could jeopardize all of the funding. So that's kind of the you know, pros and cons of the situation. That's why we're, we're kind of taking it as we can go and hope have, we wanna have FEMA guiding us all along the process because we don't want to jeopardize our funding. And hopefully the construction manager at risk would be already well acquainted with FEMA so that as they engage, because if my understanding is correct, once you hire a construction manager at risk, they're almost a project manager. Basically, yes. And that we will need that at some point. So that's why I would like to get this process started so that we don't have two to three months of bidding when we have the money already. And Mr. Miller, can we be certain that if we go in that direction that we get a cue on that? Can we get? If we go with the construction manager on that uh, aspect, can we get an alert as a council so that we can be apprised of how that's moving along? I'll have to rely on, on Mr. Trout <laughs> because that won't be coming through our office, mm -hmm. so, but yes, we'll coordinate that. Yes. Definitely keep you guys informed of that situation. I also wanna let you guys know that uh, we have reduced all of our expenses at the Bad Fish to the minimal level. Uh, we've cut our, our marketing, we've cut a lot of our different projects that we do. We've actually taken up doing all the landscaping ourselves. So as you'll notice, I got a good tan going because I've been mowing the lawn. So uh, we got a wonderful citizen donated a $5,000 mower to us, saw me out there using a push mower and it has greatly saved my life. 
So we need to make a motion to receive the matching funds. Is that correct, Mr. Tucker? We normally do. That's why I was. Right. Okay. Do we have a motion from the council? Deferment approval. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. I'm sorry. Who seconded? I did. Smith. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. No. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes, and the item passes. Item number 18. Consider approval of the reappointment of Ivory Van to serve on the City of Muskogee Foundation Board to serve a two-year term beginning August 1, 2020 and ending July 31, 2022 or take other necessary action. Mr. Van. This is the appointment of Ms. Uh, Janie, ex-Mayor Ms. Janie Boston. She appointed me to the City Foundation and uh, reason she appointed me out because I was a favorite councilman up here and I, <laughs> I know y'all gonna get a laugh on that one but I decided you know since she appointed me for a short term that I would just reappoint my own self so I'm reappointing my own self to this board I'll make a motion to appoint me on the city foundation board second we have a motion and a second do we have further discussion from the council roll call Tracy who's Yes. Tracy McGee. Yes. Stephanie Morgan. Yes. Alex Reynolds. Yes. Evelyn Hibbs. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number 19. Receive presentation from Councilor Ivory Van on the city's housing rehabilitation program from its creation in 2005 to present, and if necessary, provide direction to staff. Well, as a council. Uh, Councilor Van, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes. I know the new councilman don't know about what happened back in 2005 on this housing rehabilitation program. Mr. Garvin, could you do me a favor? Could you come up here at that mic and tell them how it got started in 2005 and who, because you at that time you were the planning director. Yes, that's I know correct. you know it like a book. Basically the way the program got started, we was looking at the original town site and the age of the housing structure, which was basically 75 to 100 years old. We had a lot of infill lots due to the demolition. We went to contractors and we asked contractors, how can we get you to come in and start building houses on these infill lots? Uh, they told, every contractor I talked to told me the same things. Number one, get rid of the dilapidated structures, which we've been doing for, for several years now. Uh, number two, uh, the current existing uh, houses are not being maintained. That's why one reason why we started the program. Number three was the appraisal of the area. A contractor said he could not come in and build a house because it cost him more than what he could sell the house for. So we started the program to, in the attempt to uh, improve the property values and to uh, get some maintenance done to some existing structures. In 2005, the original program that we started, we had a match required. Uh, we, and we was doing more than just the exterior at that point. Uh, however, when we went out to the public, we did not receive a single application. So we uh, revamped the program, looked at it again, and decided we would do it uh, where there was no match and just look at the exterior. And we, we thought that if we could get the exterior of the structures repaired, the uh, uh, roofs, siding, doors, windows, make it uh, airtight, watertight, uh, it would extend the life of that structure for another 10, 15 years. We hoped at that point the property owner would do some work inside. That's how I got started. It started in 2005, but this particular program didn't get started until 2007 when we re revised it. Mr. Gorfin, at the time this program started and they have done the houses, and you got the contractors bid, these houses, did these houses get inspected? Yes, at that time we had a, uh, we went through an agency out of, uh, uh, I believe it was Hugo, uh, we, a man by the name of uh, Burton with uh, some housing authority down there who'd done this program, this similar type of program before. Uh, we hired them to get the program started, and they're the ones who uh, originally started the program and inspected the houses in the beginning. How long did they do the inspections? Inspections had played a part in it, but Jerry Burton was the uh, construction manager and went out and met with the contractors and reviewed the houses. He was here with us for about two years, then we did everything in-house from that point on. Okay, so uh, we've, how many inspectors have we had? 
Uh, there was uh, Jerry Burton, uh, then Mr. Hurd. When did he start? Uh, he started about two years after uh, Mr. Burton left. So it'd probably be about 09, somewhere around there. I'd have to look and see, but somewhere around 09, I would say. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for explaining. Also, the funding we got on these houses came from use tax, correct? When we first started the program, we was using use tax. Uh, yeah. Then we started going through the foundation. Uh, and again, that was about two or three years after the program started. All right, thank you. This is one program that I took pride in. I mean, when the program first started, I went to my neighbors in Midland Valley, all the ones I thought needed this housing program, I passed out applications. A lot of them got them done. So this housing pro pro project has been going on quite, you know, quite some time now. And, uh, you know, we lost the program and I think, well, it was given out $300,000. And he went down. You can correct me if I'm wrong. We were giving out $300,000 to a year, and then it went down to uh, 100000 Correct? I'm, on, I'm trying to make, the picture, picture, make this picture yes, for you. Yes, originally it started out at 300000 then one year they dropped it down to two hundred. then I think they went back to three hundred. then they dropped it down to a hundred. It's varied between 100000 and 300000 since we've been going through the foundation. And then at, after that, the foundation dropped it completely because we had three sections left. Right now, they said they would go forward with funding those final areas. So we do have funding to do the final, finish area eight, do area nine and area 10. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So let that being said, I uh, appreciate the foundation. And I remember Reverend Coleman, I know they probably, I don't know if the new councilman heard him, he said this before. But I remember when we went to the foundation, we done everything but get on our knees and beg. But we begged, you begged, and we got it done. And the point of this is, all the thing I try to do up here for our city is when somebody go to work for us, I want top quality work. I know y'all have heard me use this old saying before, I don't, I don't want nothing jack legs. Mr. Reynolds, I know you can attain to that because your building looks good down there. I don't like, I don't like especially if we paying for it. I want, I want the quality. And we had a, we had trouble with contractors, even back in those days in 2007, we had trouble, big trouble. We got a hold of this one contractor, and the reason I'm saying that because they done my daughter's house. And I came up here, I forgot my pictures tonight, but this video is gonna explain everything. I took pictures and I came to the council, just like we are up here, and I explained to them right there at that mic, that how they messed up my daughter's house and I showed them the pictures. So what they did at that time, they sent another contractor out that really knew what they were doing. They took that siding off my daughter's house and redone it, recut, recut it, because they 45 is just like, oh man, it was just sloppy. So they redone it all. So I got a video here I want y'all to see back in 2008 that me and my daughter, we came, that's when they had the old benches in here. That was a different, different stand. But it's good to keep old stuff and videos. You never know when you go out to use them. And trust me, this video here will tell you why Council, I mean, uh, Congressman John Lewis, the way he fought, that's the way I fought for these houses. Because I want now, as we go on in the future on these houses, I want people to have quality craftsmanship work. A lady called me, this, these people call me, I'll say once a week about getting something done for their houses that's in the process. And I told her, I said, be patient. We got two contractors that's bid on them. And this time we're gonna get you some, a good contractor. So just be, please be patient with me. Don't be mad at me. No, don't be mad at the council. So she said, okay, Ivory. So I'm gonna have Bruce play this video Excuse and I'm gonna show you, council, go ahead. Um, you were required to sign in prior to the meeting. Between, Turn it up. Uh, four people have done that. I will remind you that uh, you have two minutes that we will not engage in any kind of a dialogue with you. Um, and at the end of two minutes, I will call your time and we will move right down the list as you're listed here. First person is Ivory. Please state your name and address as you approach the microphone. My name is Ivory Van. I live at 911 Holden. I brought my daughter tonight, Shabriel Van. She lives at 507 North Knight. Doing this together. I 
also would like Mr. Beckman to come to the center of the stage. No, that's not an option, Ivory. Okay. Since this is not an option, I was, what I was going to do was, Mr. Beckman, I know you know probably about three years. And when I first met you, you know, I'm a uh, upfront person. I thought, boy, I said, man, this is a mean, mean man. But you know what? After I got to know you and sat down in your office and you got to talking to you and everything and see how you do things, you're not a mean man. You're a nice man. And I'll, pr I'll, I'll appreciate you being nice to me. And I thought I would be nice to you tonight and give you a card from me and my family and also a card from the Robertson Park Community Association. But like, it's, you know, I, I, I was going to do that and I'm still going to do that. Can I, may I hand it to him, Ms. Uh, Mayor? Mr. Beckham? You have to hand it to him? You bet. Enjoy your time. Okay, now that's over. Now it's time to get out of business. You have 30 seconds. 30 seconds? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I have the ordinance here. It gives me three minutes. You, you see, your two-minute rule is wrong. According to this ordinance, it's, two, it's three minutes. Individual presentations would be limited to three minutes or non agenda items. Tell us exactly where you're reading from. I'm reading on the second page, page of y'all's ordinance. I'll, I'll make mine quick. This right here is an opinion. This right here is fact. Okay? I'm going to let you see these pictures. I called you, Ms. Uh, Madam Mayor, about doing a PowerPoint over there on, on this. And the reason I'm up here tonight is because of my loving daughter here. Y'all done the home revitalization program, and y'all done her home. But the only thing about it is, when y'all done her home, y'all used her home as a guinea pig. The contractor y'all hired, he never has been done any kind of uh, siding or is knowing how to bend it or everything. I brought pictures. Since you wouldn't let me put it on the projection so you could show the citizens of Muskogee what kind of work that y'all paying for, I brought it to you. Assuming that you're correct and it's three minutes, Ivory, you have 15 seconds. Well, 15 seconds don't seem like a long time when you done mess somebody's house up and put a lien on it also. <clears throat> so I would, what I would like to do is for y'all to tell me what y'all gonna do about it. And uh, like I say, this is not opinion, this is fact. When I come to this mic, it's always fact. Okay, you're excused from the microphone. Thank you, Ivory. You will. Now, if I say your name wrong, are you going to speak too? I, well, I, my time was with her. I mean, she's with me, so I was going to speak for her, to her or also. You don't have that option, but she's certainly welcome to approach the microphone. Say, and would you like to do. say something? Say, say something to her. How, tell her how, how you feel about how these contractors mess your house. Ivory, have a seat. Okay, yes, ma'am. Go She'll talk for me. Talk for herself. You're okay, girl. Look at me. Tell me your name and your address. My name is Shane Brielle, man. I live on 507 North 9th Street. And we had siding done to our house. And to me, it turned out like nothing. They messed it up. They just come over and they redone the patch and they left their scraps on the floor. And I feel as if that they done their job. They should pick up after themselves, not leaving in the yard and stuff like that. But as my opinion, I think they didn't do as what they were supposed to do, and that's just how I feel. Thank you for coming and sharing with us. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so this video here, which I got a lot more at home, even in 2005. But this video here can prove to y'all that what I'm saying in 2008, which they done their house in 2007, is that after that, they came out, they brought a contract and they repaired things on that house. But after that, by me being just a plain citizen, I just couldn't go around to everybody's house and inspect it. But I tell you what, if you pull the records, <coughs> this contractor that done this, he still does the same work. So back for you new counselor, this is what I did back, I, I look younger back then though. Do what? I look younger back then, don't I? You look, yeah, you look good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Let the record show that. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> what it did was, like I said, they came out, they, 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 they fixed it. They even back then, they wanted to put an old used door on my daughter's house. I said, boy, 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 you know? So really things is not cha didn't change with that contractor. He still done the same type work. So for the councilman that wasn't up here in 2019 of November, you can go back on the computer and look at it. I done a slideshow right over here. And I showed the last project that me and Rem Coleman went down and begged the foundation for their money. This contractor was the only contractor to bid on the job. And his work hadn't changed. It's still the same. You know, and it's a shame that we took the, uh, the city manager, took Mr. Tucker, we took uh, the, found, the person from the foundation with us. Is that about it, Mr. Miller, I believe? There's a bunch of oh, yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of y'all. Uh, oh, Patrick Kale, Councilman Kale. We went and looked at all six of these houses that they done then in 2019. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're talking about pitiful. They were pitiful. You want to take over Councilman uh, McGee or you want me to finish it up? <laughs> the only thing that I would say is that uh, since I come to the council, um, it was brought to my attention, talked to several of the residents that complain about their homes. And uh, as you guys know, there has been uh, <clears throat> an independent contract, uh, independent inspector that came and looked at these homes as well. And they have given a report. I asked my colleagues up here today, get a copy of the report, look at it for yourself, know what's going on uh, with our contractors, uh, know the quality of work that has been done where our citizens are very unhappy. I think uh, that's what we're up here for is to do what, the, what they voted us to do, and that's to be good stewards of public funds, public projects, anything that we take on. We need to make sure that when we get a inspector, they need to make sure that it's quality work as well as the contractors. And like I said, the report is out there and uh, they're in the process. I think I talked to Mike Miller a couple of weeks ago who said that they have talk, called the contractor in. He went out to do some repairs. The inspector come back, didn't do everything uh, up to standard. They had to go back out again. So just wanna say it's a pattern of practice that we see with the contractor. So uh, what Mr. Van has presented tonight is very clear to me that uh, we need quality contractors on the job to be able to finish up projects eight, nine, and 10. So I ask my, once again, my colleagues to really look at the reports. They are available, they are public information that everyone can see and know what the contractor did do and be mindful that most of these houses is uh, to a tune of $20,000. Is that about right, Mr. Gart? That's, That's quite a bit of money. As you heard his open statement, it is to bring value to your homes. People, you guys up here say, we want people to come to Muskogee. We want people to have, live, work, and play. Well, it starts with us setting an example and holding, these, holding the contractors and inspectors to their feet to the fire to do the right thing when we use public funds in the way that we use them. I may add to that. On these inspections, you know, this inspector had been inspecting these houses. Like I say, the one done mine, I thought it was still the one that was in 2009. I'm not gonna call them now, ain't no name tonight. But they had inspected these houses, but they, were, they weren't inspected properly. These last houses, six we done, this same inspector inspected these houses, but they weren't improper, properly inspected. Council and mayor, I ask y'all and plead with y'all. Go look at the reports of the, all six of these houses. I want y'all to see them. Look at them. I want y'all to see them. Because if you look at them and see how detailed that guy from Tulsa, Oklahoma was that came down and inspected these homes, I mean, he done a great job. But we pay, remember, we paid on our employees as an inspector to do these houses. He's been doing them a long time and got away with this stuff a long time because he didn't do no good job. I can tell you that right now. You know, so. I just thought I'd bring that to your attention to the new councilman. See, a lot of things y'all don't know that I know because I've been up here quite a while. You know, not as a councilman, but as a citizen. But I was blessed in God, number but God. He took me from that mic from being treated badly to sitting up in this seat. God did that. So I have a little authority now 
that when I when people call me out, like like Tracy uh, Council McGee, I go and look at this stuff. I don't take people's words. Just like on these houses, when they get through, the inspector gets through. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to go back on this one because, like I say, this guy was he's good. But we're having to spend more money in order to get somebody to inspect things right. So I hope this video is enlightening, and I hope this what we brought to y'all tonight was enlightening. So the teacher, I mean, so your new your new councilman will know that everything I Van says up here, it's not a lie. It's the truth. I got proof to prove it. My brain's just like a knowledge. I got a lot of knowledge up there on things that went on years ago. And you see this went on years ago. It started in 2007. On my daughter's house was the first house this contractor done. Didn't have the proper equipment. Didn't even have benders. But I'm going to leave it alone. But I think we made our point. So I'll turn the floor back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Van. Item number 20. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Brandon Page, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. We need a motion to move into executive session. Move for approval. Second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. We're going to ask that all of you will excuse We will now convene, reconvene from executive session. Roll call. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Here. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Here. Ivory Van? Here. Jamie Stout? Here. Evelyn Hibbs? Here. Alex Reynolds? Here. Stephanie Morgan? Here. Tracy McGee? Here. Tracy Hoos. Here. Mr. Tucker. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members of the Council, pursuant to uh, Section 307B4, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the Council did convene an executive session to discuss the workers' compensation claim of Brandon Page. After being briefed on the status of that case and the potential for settlement, uh, I believe an appropriate motion, Mayor, would be to approve settlement of the workers' compensation claim of Brandon Page in an amount not to exceed that discussed in executive session. Do we have a motion? Move for approval. Second. Motion in a second. Roll call. Tracy Hoos? Yes. Tracy McGee? Yes. Stephanie Morgan? Yes. Alex Reynolds? Yes. Evelyn Hibbs? Yes. Jamie Stout? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed? Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman? Yes. The motion passes. That will conclude our meeting for tonight.